Well, hello again, and um, I'm back looking at my Webasto um, Thermo Top C uh, water heater, which I'm going to put on my boat, my little narrow boat. And I've had an awful lot of questions, people have contacted me since my first video when I showed this running, of the wiring side of this heater. Now, as I said in my previous video, which please do have a look at, and um, I thought I'd show you this, as I've explained um, in some of the answers to the questions below. Um, I've made this up of um, parts that I've bought from various places. It's a reconditioned heater off a firm. Um, that was just the heater I bought. I've also bought, I did buy this off eBay, off a rep, uh, for a reputable firm again, I bought a new Webasto loom, which obviously makes fitting these heaters much, much easier. But people uh, are still inquiring about how one wires these up. So I just thought I'd run through what I've got here. And um, I've done a little bit more research into the wiring side of these uh, for what I want to use this purpose. Of it's this, all this is going to do is heat the hot water through a calorifier on a boat, which is a little 12 litre, you know, hot water tank. And it's going to also, for the for the um, when I fit it, it's going to run one small radiator in the uh, shower compartment of the boat to start with. I might add to it later, it could take a lot more, it could do a lot more heating, so I've been told, than that. But looking at the loom, first of all on mine we have a red and a blue with, I believe they are 6mm round fittings. That ha that's how that came and that is your battery to your 12 volt main battery supply. So obviously red is positive, blue negative to your 12 volt battery source. We then come up and we have a, well, this is all supplied with the loom. Um, we have three fuses and a relay. Now I've since read that we don't need, I think this is that's a, a 25 uh, rated blade fuse. We don't need that. We also don't need the relay. Obviously these heaters were designed uh, primarily to wire into van, lorry, car, uh, coolant water systems. So if you live in a very cold climate, you put the heater on prior to going off and get the coolant warmed up. Um, they also can obviously do the interior heat as well. Um, but this relay is designed, therefore, to wire into the engine fan and we're not going to do that we're not we're not we're just using this as a supply of hot water um, as I say as a hydronic heater for hot water for a boat so we, we don't need the relay we can pull that out and we don't need the 25 uh, amp fuse we could and we probably will tidy all this up we, we could do away with those wires to the relay and just have our main two fuses so that's the fuse panel and we pull those off, we don't need those. The, the yellow wire is the diagnostic wire. Now I believe if you put a better um, form of programmer on this, I used to have, an, uh, as I've explained before, I've had Eberspata, Ebers, I can't say the word, Eberspaca heaters, and you can buy programmers that have a diagnostic feature on the program, and I believe Webasto do one as well. Um, so then that would wire in to the uh, programmer and uh, but we, there again we don't need that that will just stay as is so then we have uh, a black and a brown wire which are coming out of our relay and I assume they would go uh, if you're using it to the engine fan um, if you're wiring up to use to preheat the coolant on an engine in really you know severe climatic conditions so we're not using those we can just blank those off 
um, that is what they're for, as I say, they're, that's the black and the brown wires which come out of the relay. Um, so then we come up, this, as you see, it comes up, the loom come, comes up to the heater, and I hope you'll see that, it fits into the heater by two simple push-down plugs. Um, so th those plugs all come with the loom, and then they just fit onto your top of your heater. Dead easy, just push them on. I'm not going to take those off, um, as though they're on. And um, so they come as is, and you just plug into your heater. Then we have a smaller red and blue wire. And this is for the Webasto fuel pump. So that just clips onto the fuel pump, those two. Another, another red and blue for the fuel pump. Then I have wired in a small programmer. We have another small loom coming off with a red, which is obviously the power supply, a blue, which is obviously the negative, and then a control wire, which is purple in my case. And that is just wired in like that to my programmer. The um, negative and positive come on the first two terminals then we loop a positive round a feed to this wire and then the control wire the purple wire comes to the end and that is a simple on off programmer I think there again I think you can set this for days but I, I shan't do that you know I should just more than likely override it and put the heater on when I want hot water or when I want the little radiator on in the shower room um, but yes that, that's a simple wiring as I say just spade um, push on and um, dead easy and these these as I've explained before you can buy these controllers um, anywhere I think I, I, I've got a new one because the battery's gone on this and it's too it's to take it apart it's not worth changing the battery um, I bought a new one which I've got in a box and I'll probably show you is was nine pounds off Amazon so they're very cheap so as I say that's the controller and that is it basically um, as I say you just plug your loom into your heater that is how it all comes like that so there's no need to do that in our case we're not using the engine fan or connecting it to an engine so we don't need the relay we don't need the 25 amp fuse so we can pull those out and that's it so I'm in, in, intending to fit this in the next few weeks the weather hopefully will start getting better as we, we're coming out of January now and I didn't want to do you know I ran out of time with the boat rewire and I thought with the winter with the frost and everything I would wait until we you know we get some better early spring weather and then fit it and give it a good chance it, it hopefully you know I need to put antifreeze in it necessary until um, next autumn early winter so we'll have it well I'll set it up now and we'll see if the heater still works. Uh, I did also say in the last video about how I prime the fuel line and pump um, on any initial startups. You don't have to do this when the heat is fitted, and you know it's. But what I like to do is obviously clip, clip the, clip the uh, two pump power cables on. See, we've got a little jar there, a diesel, and then what I like to do is bring the battery in. If we bring our car battery in, just down here, and connect to the negative, and then just you see that with I'm just pulsing the pump and getting fuel making sure in fact what I'll do I'll put my bit of rag under it we'll put that bit of rag under it there and then we'll pulse it for a little while that was very old fuel that was left um, in there from last time. Pull 
helps prime it before I connect up to the heater um, just so we've got fuel into the fuel light into the pump uh, you often have you know like it obviously you know faults and won't fire if you've not got you know um, fuel so I, I break the last connection to the heater it's on a compression this is all going to be in copper pipe eventually on the boat it has to be to comply with our um, UK boat safety certificates so there we go we'll um, come back I'll connect it back up now we've got fuel to the pump the pump is full of fuel so it should fire So there we go, we've, we've got the pump running now and um, we'll go for a test fire up. Hope you can see all this, it's just started to rain here, typical in, in the UK. There we go. You see the pump is pumping the water around in the bowl. That, that will be, if you can think of that as a, as a colour fire where the water is flowing. just going through its cycle obviously um, it takes a little while as I never give up with these there when well, you can hear that pump is just the pump is just clicking away now and it sounds you can actually tell when the pumps full of fuel because it's it's more of a hollow sound when the pumps empty and um, it's more of a low sort of thudding clicking sound when, when you've got fuel in the pump. So, so hopefully we've got fuel there and it looks like we're away again. There we go. Yep. And that's the basic little setup there. You know, we've got the little timer there and we've got the battery there. The loom is all connected in, as I say, and so we don't need that relay or that fuse as I've explained, we can pull that out um, and there we go, the heater is now firing up nicely. Um, uh, I had to abandon it because of the rain unfortunately but it, it has uh, dried up again now so, so I've just fired her up again and you can see we're circulating around the bowl okay. I have a little bit of trouble with air in the pump but once you get it to run, it seems to clear itself. Obviously, the pipes are going up a little bit. Um, in the case of the boat, that won't be like that. Um, but it should, it's pumping fine now. Now it's primed itself, and um, as you can see, um, the heater still works fine. Uh, there's a little timer over there. And we're connected up to the, just a simple 12 volt battery. Our red and blue wires, red to positive, blue to negative. And there's our uh, two fuses down there. We've done away with the relay and the 25 amp fuse. We don't need that. That, as I say, is if you want to connect it up to a vehicle with a radiator. Um, and there we go. It, it, it works a treat. The water is getting very hot. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased. It, it, it works as well as ever and starts up so easy. And um, as I say, I think it's crucial to, to prime the pumps on these and get the fuel line particularly if it's a long fuel line you've got and you can soon tell the different tone of the pump when the pump is full of fuel and, and pulsing the fuel the pump actually sort of kind of pulses the fuel along so um, yeah there we go we've got some lovely hot water over there as you can see I hope you can see the steam coming off it now and the heat is running very well and so what we'll do now we'll go across and all we do to shut it off we just press that button there and that clicks it off, you'll see the pump, the um, heater will slowly go through its off cycle. Very important on these, ne if, you, if you switch an on off switch to the battery, never switch that off uh, until it's gone through its complete cycle and cool down. And obviously there's a fan, the pump will keep running in these for some time as you can see to dissipate the hot water in the unit. So leave it running for three four minutes or even perhaps longer then if you've got a master switch switch that off you know 
because mine on the boat will be wired in to a fuse panel as well as those fuses over there um, so I can isolate it but when you're using it make sure that as I say you let the heater go through its ending cycle before you know as I say finally switching that battery switch off um, as you can see there's, there's various fans and things kicking it's still it's still whirring away to itself down there and the pump as you can see the pump is still running circulating the water so yeah I'm really pleased with that as I say that's it, it works a treat and it's so easy um, I hope this little demo again just goes to show it's well worth investing in a proper loom they are long I know you could you could shorten it if you wanted to but it is so easy particularly if you bought like I have done bought bits and pieces from various you know um, locations and putting it all together as a unit yourself uh, to have a proper loom that just slots on that just clips on the heater as it does with two plugs the little control is so easy to wire in you could wire a better control in there you could you know I think um, coming down to the control um, I could put a proper Webasto uh, control in there and I think if you if you then wire that yellow coiled up wire into that you have the diagnostic facilities some of these control panels will reset the heater and give you faults if it won't fire and diagnose, diagnose, diagnostic faults on the on the little panel on the heater so you could you could go to you know and, and invest in one of those if you wanted to um, but to say that is just a simple nine pound control off Amazon which is a clock and um, uh, you can set it as I say I should just uh, basically manual override it whenever I want to use it on the boat uh, this is purely as a, as a system to get hot water um, so there we go that's the Wabasto unit again and um, I just wanted to test it one more time before um, we commence fitting which will be a couple of couple of weeks you know into February and I should start fitting it I don't envisage any problems I have a um, I've got a space on the boat that I have in mind already and I think it's going to fit there it has got its fitting bracket on and I shall also fit it on a nice bit of um, uh, ply which might even be stainless steel backed and it'll be bolted onto that um, in the engine compartment there again on the boat um, the boat safety um, laws in this country for inland waterways um, you cannot fit one of those in the living accommodation of a boat it has to be in either if you've got a cruiser say the, the cockpit area or the engine compartment or somewhere like that you cannot fit those they they will not pass them I'm told if you fit them in actual living accommodation which is fair do you know um, they're all worried about carbon monoxide and and what have you but it, it will be vented out I will drill and put a, uh, a skin fitting in and the exhaust will be vented to the outside but as I say it will actually go in the engine compartment on the boat so there we go yep thanks for watching please do subscribe please do come back if it's you've got any more questions on this some people ask some wonderful questions I hope I've given you some sort of valid answers on on the questions that have been answered on my last video re this and um, so there we go yeah thanks for watching and come back soon and watch me try to fit this on the boat and see how it performs then bye for now uh, I do have a small radiator as you can see in front of us just here um, it's a lovely like, little dinky radiator which will be uh, won't have any valves on it it'll be in the system and as well as the calorifier to try and dissipate a little bit more hot water I don't think the color far alone is enough and um, in time I might put more radiators on or more um, water fan blown matrix heaters that you can buy for these but so it's a nice little radiator which um, will go in the shower compartment of the boat which isn't very big and it should get really nice and warm in there with that on um, as I say and there again that, that can be just switched on and off um, and will come on and off when you have the water on so um, there we go yeah uh, as I do come back and watch us try and fix it fix it in the boat in the next two or three weeks thanks for watching and bye for now